All right, my turbulence on the axe. What's going on, everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, choke, 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 choke. Hey, natural green goddess. So I'm doing something I don't do much. I usually don't talk about people like that. But this conversation. I'm going to jump in it. I'm going to talk about choke, no joke. I did talk about choke maybe about a year or so ago. I did mention them. And I'm going to talk about this situation. He's got himself in a big mess. And I'm going to give my... Uh, my views on what I see going on with that whole situation. Much respect to the brother that got out of prison. Force, much respect to you, brother. We're glad you're home. And we're glad you uh, made it through that long prison bid. Uh, choke. When Choke really got on YouTube and Instagram, I was really watching Choke a lot. I think Choke has a great ability to explain things. I really enjoyed his conversations a lot. So this is in no way I got any hate for the brother, not like that. I don't really know the brother. But I had to stop watching Choke No Joke because he was too monotonous. <clears throat> and his, 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 the way he was going about <clears throat> his conversations, I thought uh, that him saying he was blackballed in the industry at the same time while he was really telling a lot, I thought was a little weird. Because I'm thinking, well, bro, you're telling everything you know. You're kind of legitimizing being blackballed. So that's why I stopped watching him because the things that Choke was saying justified him being not trusted in the industry. So we're going to talk about all that. I'm glad y'all are doing all right. Another week. Everybody, I hope y'all making it through this situation. Don't get sloppy out there and get sick. Let somebody else be the guinea pig. Don't you be the guinea pig. And so uh, I watch a lot of stuff. I'm 62, but I watch a lot of things. You said he got you good until you peeped he was kind of goofy. Yeah, Jay. Yeah, JB Slim, MVP. Yeah. I had to stop watching him because certain things he was doing was a little strange. <clears throat> So I'm going to go all the way back before I get up to this current situation with everybody saying he's a snitch and all of that. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, when it comes to snitching, let's start there. When it comes to snitching and telling, uh, 
you know, if you're a civilian or whatever, and you're, uh, you know, you're, you're just a civilian, and you don't do crimes, and somebody try to kill you or some bad situation, then you can go to the police and do what civilians do. But if you, in the streets, you have to keep your mouth shut. Now, I've been on both sides of the fence. I've been in court and I've testified on people, and I've also not. But I've been a civilian and I've been a criminal. And I was basically a civilian first. The person tried to kill me, was arrested. I went and testified. Yeah, that nigga right there tried to kill me. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> this is a crazy story. Okay, I won't tell that story because my book coming out, but it was more to that when I went. But I won't tell that. But yeah, I... I was just a regular roster man. I wasn't doing no crimes. Another a dread brother stabbed me up for no reason as far as I'm concerned. I went to court. That motherfucker right there, you know. Me. That's when I was with a civilian. And then I be end up doing a lot of shit on the streets. For me on the streets... I don't believe in telling anybody. If I go get something from you, some work from you, and I get caught with it, hey, I'm not telling where I got the work from. If me and you doing something together and we get arrested, I don't know nothing. But I don't agree with <clears throat> the no snitch rules, like the street terms of it. If you try to kill me or hurt me, there is no fucking rules. I don't care if I kill you. I don't care if I send you to prison forever. I don't give a fuck. So I do differ there. If you try to kill me or do bodily harm to me, there's no rules. I don't give a fuck what happened to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not going to I'm not going to play uh, street rules if you try to do something to me. Okay? That motherfucker there tried to kill me. I have no problem with that. Even if I'm in the streets <clears throat> and you try to kill me, all bets is off. But now, as far as crimes, uh, I don't know nothing. I ain't seen nothing. I ain't done nothing. If we're doing crimes and stuff, and, then I don't know nothing. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> One reason, because I was, after I got stabbed, I was doing a lot of crimes. And one reason that I never, ever told anything to the police is because telling was an admission of guilt for me. So if I got some marijuana and the police pulled me over, I don't know where that came from. So if they say, where did you get it from? If I told them where I got it from, I just admitted that I got it. So I've just guaranteed that I'm guilty. So I'm never going to do no shit like that. You don't tell because a telling is an admittance that you were involved. That's just common sense. So I've never told... Because telling is a trick. So you get arrested. You just bought a gun. You're driving in a car. You get pulled over with the gun. Police come to the cell and say, where'd you get the gun from? If you say, I got the gun from, from Robert. You just told on yourself. Duh. You're not beating that case because you just said, I got the gun. <clears throat> so for me... Under no circumstances when I'm doing crimes am I telling anything. I don't know nothing. I haven't seen nothing. I'm not saying nothing. If you're doing crimes, if you're young, stop. I'm going to start right there. Don't hang out with criminals. 
Don't do crimes. Don't get involved with the streets. Go get a job, get a learner trade, get an education, save your money, start your own business, but don't don't do crimes at all. Never. But if you do do crimes and you're caught by the police, remember the key word. Especially if you're the criminal. Don't talk at all. Save your story for the judge. Now, not just for crimes, for traffic tickets, or anything involving the police. Don't say anything. Young ladies, if the police pull you over, say you made a funny turn right there, don't say anything anything because you still got to go to court save your story for the judge give yourself some time to think what are you going to tell the judge because when you speak real quick to the police you might going to say something totally different to the judge so never talk to the police keep your mouth shut you got to listen to what they tell you. They say you have the right to remain silent. And this is, it's two key words they say after that. They say anything you say can and will be used against you. Now take that middle part out. And they're basically saying what? Anything you say will be used against you in a court of law. So even if you said something Decent, the police let you know anything you say can, but here's the key part, and will, anything will be used against you in the court of law. So that's something to always remember, okay? Keep your mouth shut if the police pull you over. You don't know nothing, you ain't seen nothing, you're not saying anything. And... If you go by the street codes, just on you. Me, if I'm in the streets, I go by the street codes. Unless you try to do something to me. If you try to kill me, there's no code. Period. I don't care if you go to prison. I don't care if you die. I don't care. If you try to shoot me, try to kill me, I'll, walk, I'll go on national TV and point you out. He tried to shoot me. You don't get no rules if you try to kill me. I'll... Fucking bets is off. I'm not playing no street politics. You tried to kill me. So I'm not quite go the street codes like they try to kill you, keep it in the streets, keep your mind. Nah, nah, nah. For one, if you try to kill me, I might not be able to find you to kill you back. I got if I can get you locked up at the county, I can get you killed. That's another story. So sometimes jail sometimes it'll benefit me for the police to find you for me. But that's another story. Read my book when it come out, and we'll talk about all that. So let's get to Choke. Uh, I used to watch Choke at first a lot. I thought he was very wise. I liked the way he breaks stuff down. He would show me angles that I wouldn't think about. But he began to irritate me because it was like Jay-Z, 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 Jay-Z. And it was getting a little bit to be a little bit too much. And I was like, Jesus Christ, dude, you're like 50-something years old. You fucking Jay-Z, what the hell? So he was doing too much Jay-Z, Jay-Z, Jay-Z. But that's not the real, the main reason I stopped watching it. What up, Noni? The main reason I stopped watching Choke No Joke is that what he was saying justified him being blackballed in the industry because he was telling stories about how he would go to parties and people would do weird stuff and he would tell people, did you see that? Did you see he did this weird? So he was telling everything, he was telling everything he's seen, he was telling it. Everything he's seen in the industry he was telling somebody, or he was making faces, and he was letting them know early that what he's saying was bothering them. Let me give you an example. 
let's say I go, I'm in the industry, I'm in the music industry, and I'm there, it's a bunch of dudes. I'm sitting here, and the dude next to me trying to make a pass at me. Yeah, I'm good. Right? So the dude next to me trying to make a pass at me, okay? I brush it off, I play it off. But always remember, handle that, but handle it on the low low. Brush it off. Keep it to yourself. Handle it on the low low. Don't let everybody know that this person tried to do something. Right? So always keep it on the low. Why I look long like uh, 20 years ago? Because uh, I don't eat meat. I don't eat meat. You know, I'm a vegan. I'm a strict vegan. I only eat plants. So, if something happens to you, keep it on the low low. Go. If you got notes in your phone, write down. Go up to yourself and write down the exact time it happened. All the details that happen, save. When you go home, print it out, uh, put it in the file. Also, save it in the file on your computer. Everything. If you're at your job, everything that's happening, right? You save it. If somebody's at your job doing racist stuff to you or whatever, sexual harassment, every time, write it down, save it. Write it down. Save it. Write it down. Save it. Date it and save it. Build your case for a lawsuit. Build your case. <clears throat> when you go to court and they say, man, this lady or this man been documenting this stuff, documenting this stuff. Without a doubt, you did this. Look at all these notes. These are detailed notes. When, where, time, places, pictures. You know, if you're at a restaurant, somebody try something with you, go to the bathroom, take a picture in the bathroom or take a picture somewhere in the restaurant. When you leave the restaurant, take that picture. This was the restaurant. Write down everything. My mother taught me that. No matter what job you got, any type of little harassment, uh, save it all. Save it all. But do not tell anybody. Keep your mouth shut. It ain't going to do you no good. And it's going to allow people to set up that they didn't do it. So you're giving them a pass. Right? So, especially when you're in the industry, music industry, anything like that, keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. Don't tell anything. So I'm sitting next to this guy. This guy tried to make a pass at me. Trying to touch me. I push his hand off. But don't make any faces. When you're out in public and something goes wrong, you've got to keep a straight face. Don't let people read you. Don't let people be able to read your face. It's very important. Don't let people be able to read and look at me and know that this guy did something. Keep a straight face. Keep it straight. Wait till you get a time. When you catch the guy where nobody knows, you say, hey, man, don't, don't do that. Don't do that, man. Hey, we cool and everything. You're a cool dude, but just don't do that. All right, I got you, though. You know what I'm saying? So what you want to do with that person is you want to make friends with that person. You, want, you don't want to hold it against you. He might be drunk. He might just be a weirdo, but you want to make friends with him. Now, this doesn't work in prison. This is outside. So what you want to do is you want him to relax. You want him to know it's cool. You cool. Well, no big deal. Just don't do that, man. What the hell? You know what I'm saying? But we cool. So now that person will never do that again because the person's going to respect your friendship. The person's going to respect how cool you was about that error that they made. And basically now you got, that person basically feels like they owe you a favor. But you don't say anything. Even in certain situations, when you go from this place to that place, 
Don't tell what happened at that place. Recording artists make that mistake all the time. He's at Sony. He leaves Sony. They say, what happened at Sony? Sony was all messed up, man. They was doing everything. And he tells all Sony's business. Let's say I'm United. I'm Universal. Let's say I'm Universal Records. And I'm watching your interview. And you're telling everything you know about the last employer. And I don't want you over here. See what I'm So you're shutting doors because nobody likes a tattletale. You know, I was a little kid, and sometimes my mother told me I could never hit my sister. She hit me, I got to tell. She was a year younger than me. But sometimes we would get into this little thing where I'd run and tell mom, Mama, she's doing it again. Mama, she lifted her tongue out at me. Mama, Mama, I'm running back and forth. I remember my mama said, don't be a tattletale. So don't be a tattle. Keep your fucking mouth shut. Now, let me give you the best example. One time I got arrested and for some marijuana in Chicago. And they took me to 11th Estate and they searched me and everything, but I, they brought me from the county jail to 11th Estate. Then they're going to take me to 26th in California or make me go to court there, I think. And I had like $300 in my underwear. The police searched me and everything, didn't find the $300. When they took me and locked me up, I seen a young brother I knew named Butchie, me and Butchie kicking it in there. And after about three or four hours, Butchie was getting released. So I pulled the $300 off and I said, Butchie, go bail me out. I don't know what I was thinking. But I gave Butchie the money and Butchie went to bail me out. But the police took the money. I'm in there just chilling and I look up. And it's like nine to 13 police. They come to the cell, they bring me out to the cell over this $300 that I had in the cell. They took me, they sat me in a seat like this, and it's all these blue shirts, Chicago police, police around me looking at me like this. All of a sudden, the crowd opened up and one came with the white shirt. All the bars. I don't know if he was a sergeant or a lieutenant, but he was high ranking. He pushed through the crowd. He walked up on me, he said, because I had smuggled $300 in the jail. So the white shirt said to me, which one of these officers searched you? I said, come on, Sarge. I called him Sarge, but I don't really know he could have been a lieutenant. I said, come on, Sarge. Give him a break. He searched me good, Sarge. He said, which one? I said, I'm not going to tell you which one of these officers searched me and mess him up and he lose his job and everything. He searched me good, Sarge. I had that $300 here real good. There was no way he could find it. He did a good job. He really searched me good. That's what I told Sarge. The Sarge looked at me and he said, let him go. The sergeant looked at me with police all around me and said, let him go. And when I went to court for that case, nobody showed up. You know why? Nobody likes a fucking snitch. The sergeant wanted to find out who gave me that money, but he respected the fact that even though the police was the ops, I'm the cop, I'm the crook, they the police. I did not tell. And because I kept my mouth shut, and I didn't tell which cop searched me, and I didn't tell which cop couldn't find that $300, the sergeant told all those police to let him go. They let me walk right out of the jail. Because you got to keep your mouth shut. So I'm saying all that to say when I watched Choke, he was telling a lot of stories. He was saying a lot of stuff that he was saying to people while he was in the industry. And I don't understand why he don't realize why he's blackballed. He talks too fucking much. He talks too much. And if you find yourself in a situation where you get blackballed, talking more is not going to get you unblackballed. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? So he just talks and talks and tells everybody's business, everybody. So it went, 
it went from Choke having a problem with Jay-Z and trying to air it out to just telling a lot of people's business, telling everybody's business, uh, telling who's this and who's that. And he was just talking, 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 talking. And now a situation came up where somebody's saying he's a snitch. A brother that went to jail for 20-something years is out. And the brother is saying that Choke got a lot to do with it. Now, the story is it was a car with Choke in the car driving and two other brothers. And the brothers see somebody own money. They jumped out, ran around the corner, came back, got in the car. And Choke said he didn't see nothing. But Choke took the man to a hotel to hide out, which means there was talk once the man got in the car of the violence that had happened. They didn't know if the man died, but they knew they had fucked the man up. So they dropped this man off at the hotel, put him in the room, and here's where one of the main problems with this story with Choke. This is where he fucked up at. And I don't know why he just don't lie and wallow in his shame. You're in a car. They chase a guy down. Stab him up real bad or whatever. You don't know if the guy died or not. You drop the guy off at the hotel. He tells you, go park my car at my mother's house. You drop me off at a hotel, I'm hiding out from the police. Right? Real gangster shit. I'm hiding out from the police so I can get away with this crime. I don't know if the guy died or nothing, but I stabbed him up bad because the guy said he basically gutted him. I tell you, I tell Choke, go park my car at my mother's house. I'm trying to get out of this crime. What do they do? They joyride in the man's car that was involved in a serious crime and they dropped the man off at the hotel. And Choke got the nerve to say, how the police find him? <laughs> I said, what the hell going on? Bro, Anybody with any kind of sense would have got the fuck out that car just on their own. But the fact of the matter that the man told you to park his car and you didn't respect that man's wishes and park his car at his mother's house, right there, Choke was bogus. Right there, he was bogus. That's an ass whooping right there. Right there, that's a violation. Period. If I go do a crime in my car, and you drop me off, and I said, man, go park my car at my daddy's house. And you know I'm hiding out. And I tell you, go park my motherfucking car. And you still drive around my car four, five days later. Nigga, you bogus as hell. So right there, you a sleazeball. Right there, choke is a sleazeball. Straight like that. That's a violation right there. Nigga, the car hot. You're going to get the man jammed up. If you park the car, you can get the car out of the situation. But you drive around, choke still drive around in the motherfucking car. They done made an illegal U-turn in the motherfucking car. The police get the license, to get their license, go to police station, say, yeah, it's a uh, U-turn in this car. The police say, we looking for that car. How dumb can you get what the fuck going on? Not only did you go park the car right away, y'all out there reckless in the car right after a violent occurrence. And you 19 years old. Might have been might have been 17, but you older than the dude, so he wasn't 15. Right? That's the first dumb shit right there. Bro, you were still driving around in the car while the man hiding out. If I'm hiding out, do I want my car roaming up and down the street? 
I mean, I mean, what the fuck going on? The car could trace back to me. Park the car. But you done got a ticket in the car to prove that I'm moving around. So now the man's uncle and some crackhead tell it was him and it's Cody. But they looking for the co-defendant. They got out the car with Choke. Choke stay in the car. These two niggas go do this violent crime. Choke still in the car with one of the niggas. Third, that's the third problem, because the second problem, why didn't both of them niggas go to the hotel? They both, <laughs> unbelievable. If, if me and a nigga jump out of the car and stab up a motherfucker, when we go to the whole, to a hotel, me and that nigga got to go in the room. No, one nigga do the crime going to the hotel, the other nigga do the crime in the car with choke. The car you supposed to drop off, and you still driving around in the motherfucking car. Hey. What's the fuck going on? America's dumbest criminals, right? So anyway, the uncle telling all that, so they looking for him. So when Choke say, Choke lied. Choke is a lie. Choke say, the man sent the police to get him. No, they arrested you riding around in the hot, in the in the car that was a part of the crime with the Cody nigga. What the fuck is you talking about, bro? You with the nigga they looking for. What? What What part of that? See, I don't, if you're going to tell your story, uh, Choke should tell the truth. Why the fuck is he lying? Bro, you in the car, still in the car with this nigga. The other nigga that should have been at the hotel in the house. I do a crime with you. I go high. I think you should go high, too. Because catching you, is gonna, they're going to pinch you to find me. Duh, what the fuck going on? They shouldn't have been able to find neither one of us. And especially not my car. So my Cody and Choke is in my car, taking advantage of me, the fact I can't get my car because I'm hiding for a violent crime. And you're going you're gonna to dog me out. That's how I look at it. You're going to dog me out. You ain't going to obey my wishes when I'm in trouble. How you don't obey a brother's wishes when a brother's in trouble? I'm in trouble. You drop me off at the bus station and say, take this letter to my mama and park the car at my mama's house and go tell my daddy this. So you don't do none of that. You don't do none of that. Right there, you're a rat bastard right there. Right off the top, Choke is a rat bastard for not parking that man's car and getting out that man's car. Right there, that's some rat shit, period. Before we even get to a snitch, you're a snake ass snake. Like, bro, you still driving this man's car? It's not your car. That's the first thing. You're a snake. Straight like that. And now he get caught up. The uncle didn't told. Everybody caught up. But 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 Choke just a witness. Now, the uncle don't come to court. Choke come to court. They can't do nothing to you if you don't come to court. They can subpoena you or whatever, but you ain't doing no serious time for not coming to court. You might get a fine. Maybe they give, maybe they give some, a few days. They can't do shit if you don't show up. They can't do shit if you don't show up to testify. So this nigga come, and test, come to court with bells and whistles on. Now listen. Niggas ain't dumb. If you come to court, that means you already been talking. You already been talking against the defendant. Because if you're talking for the defendant, they ain't going to bring you to court. The police is not going to bring nobody to court that's going to talk on my behalf if I got a case. So if they get you at the police station, you constantly talking on my behalf, they're going to say, go on. Therefore, it's safe to say that Choke, uh, choke no telling what the fuck he was saying to the police. Talking about they scared him and shit. So now, 
Chunk story, I was young, and they got me and they scared me. Well, you should have been scared to have been in the car with these niggas. You should have been scared to keep driving around in the man car. Why you wasn't scared and you kept driving around in the car where motherfuckers committed attempted murder in? That later was a murder. So when it's time to come to trial, there's a crackhead that says she identified a different dude. She said, this dude is force. Then later, she identified force and said, no, nah, that's force. So this crackhead identified two forces, but the first one wasn't him. So therefore, it's just like 50 Cent. Nobody knows who Ghost is. So nobody really knows who's Ghost. The crackhead then said two different people ghost. He finna beat that because it can't be no probable cause. Guess who come to court and says that's force and identifies his nickname? Choke. Choke was the one that made it, that made the crackhead's testimony legit because Choke come, first he should never came to court. But even if he was scared and came to court, he should have never called a man force. He should have called a man by his name. And they said, is he known by force? I'm like, I ain't never heard him being named by no force. Who the hell is force? Now, you go to court and say, that's force right there. That's force. He got out the car. He came back. He had some blood on his shirt, but his nose was bleeding. Which tells me you've been told him he had some blood on his shirt when he came back, and now you don't want to look like a snitch, so when it's time to go to trial, you added that his nose was bleeding to cover from the fact that early at the police station, when you've been going to a police station, you told him he came back with a knife and blood on his motherfucking shirt. Nigga, that's a snitch. That's a snitch. He was already working with the police. So he helped the police identify this man's nickname, and he said this man come back with blood on his shirt and his nose bleeding. Now, if I jump out the car and I run around the corner to fuck somebody up, and I come back with blood on my shirt and my nose bleeding, my nose bleeding do not prove I didn't do it. Actually, the nose bleeding proves it was a fucking squabble that I got injured while I was fucking this person up. Duh. That's, uh, he basically sent that man to prison. On top of that, if the man knows you're going to do that, the man could have copped out. The man could have copped out for 7 to 21. He would have came home a decade ago. But he don't know your goofy ass finna do this shit. So this man ended up doing like 25 years or some shit when he could have copped a plea. Now here's the key that ain't nobody said. The Cody copped a plea. So the Cody didn't get none but three years or whatever. But you know why the Cody copped a plea? Why did the Cody know it was an open and shut case. The one that was riding around with Choke. And, and when he got arrested, they took Choke to the station with him. But Choke wasn't arrested. He was brought in as a witness. Because the Cody, I would suspect, allegedly or probably knew what Choke was doing. The Cody knew. Oh, we can't beat this case because Choke is in there. Choker's in there spilling his guts out. So the code he copped out. That would be my guess. You understand? So what kind of nigga that's out on the streets, talking about he living in a rough project, talking about he was slinging a little bit and he was all this, what type of nigga like that show up to court and sit on the stand and say, yeah, that's your nickname and you came back and you had a little pouch in your hand with a knife in it. And you got blood on your motherfucking shirt. 
but you say, I didn't see nothing. You don't have to see nothing. All you have to do is corroborate what the other witnesses said. If I jump out of the car and I run around the corner after a nigga and you tell everybody that I ran after that nigga and that nigga end up dead and everybody over there say they seen me stab that nigga and you say you seen me run after that nigga, nigga you just told. I don't know why he's saying he didn't snitch. He did motherfucking snitch. You came and you testified on behalf of the motherfucker Shit. You know what I'm saying? He testified not on behalf of the person he was riding around driving his car when he was supposed to park it. You didn't have no problem driving his car. But now you can't stand up for him. You were in there testifying on behalf of the fucking prosecution. And you a street nigga. If he was a civilian, fine. But no, he wasn't. He was dibbling and dabbling. So now all of a sudden he wants to say, I was only 15 or whatever. No, you wasn't only 15 when you were driving that car around and had guns on you and selling dope. You was moving like a grown man. Young niggas kill me. You want to fuck like a adult. You want to fuck women that can get them pregnant, adult. You want to do adult things, but then when it go bad, then you want to pretend you was a kid. I'm not going for that shit. Your life got stamps. The numbers of your life got stamps. And so we're not going for no bullshit. Your number, what you what I mean by stamps, you're a baby. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's unusual about that? It's all what? Single figures. Then you turn ten. Double figures. Now you ten. You got two numbers. Okay, that's the first significant change in your life. Uh. You ain't in the single figures no more. You ten now. Then what's next? 10, 11, 12. Then you get what? Teen on your shit. 13. The reason the church baptized you in Baptist church at 13 and at the Lutheran and Catholic church, the reason they give you catechism is because once you're 13, you old enough to face your maker. You no longer at the Catholic and the Lutheran church, you're no longer under the protection of your God, mother and God, father. Now everything you do is between you and the most high. Your ass is 13 years old. So 15, 16, 17, now you old enough to know what to do and what not to do if you're out on the streets. Nobody going for that, you only 15 shit. Nobody going for that. You told. You tried to do some big man shit, and then you became a snitch. You got to wear that snitch jacket. And what's horrible about it is he always outing everybody. See, God don't like ugly. Always outing everybody. Always saying who's a snitch, and who's a this, and who's a that. I would think he would have sat down somewhere being quiet with this in his history. But no. He made himself popular by talking about other people all the time. That's why you don't see me do that. But that's why you see me doing it with him. He built a persona out for telling everybody business and telling how everybody else should have did this and should have did this and should have did that. And now look. He a part of sending the man to prison. Told. out there trying to act like a little gangster, but when the shit got tough, he folded like a motherfucker. And then even after that was over, he got in the industry and was still telling everything, you know, even up till now, telling and telling and talking and revealing people's personal shit that only he was privy to see and he was telling it. What happens in the recording studio stays in the motherfucking recording studio. What happens when you're doing business with somebody it stays there. Even with your woman or your wife. 
if I if I'm with my wife and my wife do some foul shit or do some bogus shit and we go our separate ways, I'm not telling nobody what she did. Cause that's stay between me and her. If anybody gonna tell our personal business, it's her. She a woman. She the one gonna gossip and tell people shit they don't need to know. But we men, we males. We don't know nothing. We ain't seen nothing. We ain't heard nothing. And if anybody got to be the fall guy, we fall on the sword. Hey, what happened to your relationship? I fucked it up. Even if I didn't. Ain't none of your business, nigga. Feel me? It ain't the fact I'm trying to protect her. Fuck you, though. I ain't telling you shit. I don't know. I ain't telling you nothing. Not my boy. Not nobody. You ain't my boy like that. Pause. Hey, you my boy, you my guy. I fuck with you. We we partners. But we ain't on partners on my personal business. Ain't got nothing to do with you. I'm writing a book right now. I'm leaving a lot of shit out. If it ain't, if if what I write in this book, everything gotta be a hundred percent my life. Anybody else's life, I'm not going in details on nobody else's life. I'm just gonna tell the basics on how it what was going on with me. But I'm not finna jump off of my life and my book and go telling specifics about other people's life. There ain't none of them. They ain't, I ain't doing, I ain't writing it like that. I'm writing it calculated while I tell everything interesting to me to make the book really good, but I'm leaving out when it starts wandering into other people's business. I don't know nothing. I ain't seen nothing. I ain't heard nothing. Now, this man, this man been out of jail a lot of years, six years. But see, Choke was trying to call the man a rat, trying to say, if I did a crime with you and you get arrested first, how they come and get me then? How they come and get me then? Knowing that it wasn't a man, it was his uncle told on the Cody, and knowing they was riding around in the man motherfucking car. That's how they came and got you, Choke. You was still in the car, stupid. You was still in the car after a violent crime. Not only was Choke still in the car, the man told you, take the car to my mama house and parked it, and you played that man. You did some snake shit. If you're watching this choke, that was some snake shit. This man is in trouble. That's why you took him to a hotel. Why would you keep his car when his wishes was for you to park his car? I don't like niggas like that. So now to come to find out he wasn't no loyal good nigga or nothing. How would you feel if you got in trouble and I took your car and I dropped you off at the airport, you finna fly out of town, you say, you know I know your auntie that you said, bro, take my car to my auntie house and give her this letter. How would you feel you find out I never took your car to your auntie house? I'm just driving it. While you in trouble. How would you feel about that? While you in trouble. Your car. Not my car. I just got your shit. Like, fuck you. You can't do nothing about it now. You're in trouble. That's how I take it. Like, you know this man can't come get you out of his car because he hiding. So you're just going to drive his shit out. Y'all get tickets and get arrested and everything in the motherfucking car. And he got the nerve to say anything. That whole shit was some snake and some rat shit. The whole shit was ratty and snaky on Choke's part. He, everything he did was bogus. The whole shit was foul. He was foul from the rooter to the tooth. Especially when he walked his ass in there for the prosecutor. If you're going to walk in for the prosecutor... On a violent crime, it need to be something happening to your family or happen to you. In them cases, then yeah, all gangster shit is up. I don't give a fuck if I'm the biggest gangster in the world. You shoot my mama and they catch you. Yeah, that nigga there shot my mama. Fuck you, nigga. Because if I'm a gangster, I don't got to go by no motherfucking rules. I ain't got to go by no motherfucking rules if I'm a blam or blam. If I'm a up to hammer, nigga, fuck a rule. What you, who going to do something about it? If I'm a gangster, who going to do something about it? So this whole thing with the no snitching shit... 
niggas done fucked that up because no snitching me if I do a crime with you. That's no snitching. That's all no snitching is. If I do a crime with you and we get caught, I don't know nothing. If I get some work from you, if I get a gun from you, if I do something for you and they catch me, where you get this 10 pounds from, I don't know. That's no snitching. If you try to shoot me, all that, keep it in the streets, fuck the streets. I'm looking for you in the streets. I don't give a fuck what happened to you. I wouldn't give a fuck if they gave you, if you shoot me and I could die, I wouldn't give a fuck if you got to do 40 years in jail. Why would I try to uphold some code and run around the street trying to shoot you back and end up catching a case, another case after you shot me? Now I got a case for trying to shoot you too and you get away with it? No, nigga, that nigga's shot me. Fuck you, nigga. Like, if I buy some work from you, I owe you loyalty for selling me the work. We doing business together. I owe you loyalty. I don't owe you no loyalty if you try to kill me. I don't care if I kill you, somebody else kill you, the police arrest you. I don't care. But I'm not finna walk in no courtroom over no shit you did to somebody else that ain't none of my business. I'm not going in the courtroom. I'm never, the police just got to do whatever they got to do. I'm not sure. I never would have showed up. I never would have showed up to testify. I don't know shit. And when I show up, I don't know nothing. I sure don't know your street name. Everything you do is on the streets. So I'm not going to identify you by your street name. That's why you got a street name. This motherfucker going to go in there and tell everybody that this is that. Yeah, that's force. That's him. He had blood on his shirt. Oh, but his nose was bleeding. Trying to, trying to, trying to, trying to, a weirdo shit. Like, tell on me and try to make me think you're trying to save me at the same time when you told on me. Nigga, I got blood on my shirt. I chased him around the corner. I came back with blood on my shirt. Are you serious, nigga? At what point that ain't snitching? Man, if that ain't no Mickey Mouse shit, if that ain't no, no motherfucking Mighty Mouse shit, that shit's a motherfucking... Come on, man. Speedy Gonzalez shit. You know what I mean? Come on. Tom and shit. Not Jerry, but Tom. Like, one of them mics. What the fuck going on? And so he going around having a conniption fit trying to say he ain't snitching. He ain't winning in court on behalf for the prosecution because he got arrested in the car that he didn't go park like the man told him to motherfucking park. Man, what the fuck going on out here where niggas is doing all this lying on this internet and all this old bullshit? What the fuck going on? This man, and, and what the reason I'm talking about it for the youth and for everybody, this man hung himself. It's fair to say, if this man wasn't out trashing everybody and talking all that shit, this shit probably never would have came out. But this man got everybody's name in his motherfucking mouth. Constantly telling grown men to suck his dick and all that old weird old shit, right? You know what I mean? Doing stupid shit, you know, tripping. And now look, all because he wouldn't shut the fuck up. And any of us watch this and see how much he run his mouth and now hear this story and see how he carries himself could see why he couldn't get along with Jay-Z and Dang. Because when you fucking with street niggas and you know on the streets and shit, a little bit of snake shit people see. A little, just a little something. Because on the streets, sometimes you have little weird shit happen and it turns to something really big. And from that point on, you say, next time I see any little weird shit. Remember? It's like you ever had bad things happen when it's over and maybe you get out of jail and everything over and you start thinking, you say, you remember that time? 
Remember how Reggie did this? Remember when he was moving like that? You start thinking back to when people was doing little weirdo shit that led to this problem. So the next time you get around the next person and they do any kind of shit, they out of it. So this man's reputation is done. He needs to just sit down, go find something to do. People are still hiring to shoot videos and shit, but nobody want to see him on the internet talking no more. He got to shut the fuck up. This man did 20-something years when that man could have copped out or that man could have beat his case. Because any time your uncle don't show up to court, but the nigga that was driving your car around with you, stu, that's some bullshit. Because the man uncle told on him too. But see, the uncle really didn't tell on him like that because the police tricked everybody and had everybody thinking the man was alive and just wanted to know who he was fighting and who he cut. So everybody like he was fighting everybody. So he was cutting. He said it was probably him. Then the police went and told everybody, well, by the way, he died, which should have been illegal. The whole case should have been thrown out. If the police is under the pretense that the man's alive and trick people out of statements, then say, well, he died and turn it into a murder case. That's messed up. But this situation with Cho, you know, I don't know why he's mad at Queen's flipping for having the brother on the couch. Like, Choke is a fake-ass nigga. Like, Choke don't want Queen, Queen's Flip to have this man on the couch talk about him. But he be on the internet talking about every motherfucking body. Like, I don't understand that phony-ass shit. How's a nigga that got niggas' name in his mouth all the time? He tell everything that happened with love and hip-hop and everything. He just be, he got motherfucking diarrhea out of the fucking mouth. He talk too motherfucking much. I wouldn't have never hired that nigga. Who gonna hire you? Bro, if you get a record deal at Sony and it don't work out and you get off the label, somebody do an interview, say, what happened over at Sony? Say, shout out to Sony, you know what I mean? For looking out for me, for giving me that opportunity. I never forgive them for I never forget them for that. Sony was on point. They gave me a they gave me a chance. I ain't got nothing but good things to say about Sony. That's what you say. So that way if Universal wants you. They go, yeah, we'll sign him. He know how to keep his motherfucking mouth shut. The more you tell on the last person, the less the next person want to fuck with you. Nobody want to fuck with you and be the new person to fuck with you when you're telling everything about the last person. Who? If I meet a woman and she starts telling everything about her last man, she going to spook me. I'm thinking, damn. If, so, if I don't stay with her, she going to, damn, that's how you get down? I ain't fuck with you. You talk too much. Uh-uh. So now you going to make me leery because you tell everything. There was no way Choke was going to get back in the industry with his mouth still leaking like that and leaking like that. Because the truth is, with him being out the industry, he didn't tell. The truth is, with Choke is, that he he went and ran his mouth to a mouth runner. And real niggas know what really happened. The real reason Jay-Z and them stopped fucking with Choke is Choke told somebody something and they told them. And y'all know, we real niggas and we know what really happens. You go tell somebody something and then they go tell. Let me give you an example. We was trying to have this Holly Selassie Day Festival, right? This shit was crazy. I was mad as hell. We was trying to have a Holly Selassie Day Festival. So we there trying to get it together at the Brothers Record Store, at the Brothers Bookstore. So when we all go home, one of the sisters there called me and said, one of the brothers like pulled out his, his penis in the back and showed it to her. Now she was married. To another brother. So I said, are you fucking kidding me? She's like, no. Nah. You know, he did that freak weird old shit to me. So she told me, she said, don't tell nobody. Because if my husband find out, 
It's going to be a big old mess. He's going to want to kill the brothers and all that. I'm like, all right. I was paired up with an elder sister to do our work. They paired us all up to do different work to organize the shit. So the sister was older than me, an elder sister. Check this shit out. So now, my mind is like this. Since this man did this atrocious thing to a sister, I want to tell a sister, an elder sister, so somebody got their eye open, but I don't want to tell on the brother, like, to expose it. I just want one of the elders to know I happened, right? Basically breaking my code because the sister told me don't tell nobody. But this an elder Rasta sister, right? So therefore, if I ask the elder Rasta sister and I say, hey, I'm going to tell you something, but you got to promise and swear to me that you don't say nothing, but it's something I think you should know as the older woman there's a problem with a woman and I think you should know because I really thought that was legit because she was an elder and the brother pulled his dick out to a, young, to a younger sister. So I wanted the elder sister to be like, this brother doing wicked shit and foul shit, just keep your eye on him but don't say nothing because I promised the sister I wouldn't tell nobody. Right? I tell the sister all this shit. I promised the sister I wouldn't tell nobody. I'm only telling you because you're an elder. I want you to watch. I don't want you to say nothing. I said over and over, promise me you're not going to say nothing. Yes, sir, Bridget. Yes, sir. I never say nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An elder gave me a word. I, gave, I told her I gave my word. So I did everything I could to be honorable. I gave my word. I wouldn't tell nobody this. So if it ain't going to really be for the benefit of me telling you, let me know now and I just keep it to myself. Like I said, if you ain't going to do, if you're not going to do what I'm telling you with it, and you're going to do something opposite from what I'm giving you the information for, let me know now. You're supposed to be a roster woman. So you're not supposed to just straight in my face lie to no roster man like that. Man, I told that sister that shit. That sister ran back and told all the brothers at the thing what I told. I never talked to her since then. I can't wait till I see you though. Got a whole bunch to say. She's going to be, hey, brother. And I'm like, you ain't nothing what you say you is. Remember I told you to keep your motherfucking mouth shut? And what did you do? Don't talk to me, lady, because you're going to go back and tell everybody you just seen me now. I'm going to call all kind of negative bitches and shit. Because, bitch, you ain't no roster. You just a funky bitch, okay? That's what people want to be talked to and held up on a high regard but won't keep they self up on a high regard. No, if you're a queen, your word would have been like gold. Your word would have been bond. So these brothers end up wanting to kill each other. And who looked like the person that leaked it? Me. But I wasn't. I wasn't the person that leaked it. I was the person being responsible to let the elders know to clean, to keep their eye open and keep it straight around there. She went back. And Ramesses told me this and this and this and this happened. Went back on some gossip shit. Then tried to call my phone a couple of days later. Tried to send a friend request on Facebook. I'm like, look at this bitch right here. Oh, wow. Slap your ear up off your head. Yeah, she gossiped. She wanted to gossip rather than fix the situation, protect the sister. So then she put everybody in danger because if we got back to the sister's man and now him and the brothers was talking about shooting each other. See what I'm saying? Just like that. Just like that.
just like that. So all that, all that is to say, you know, that's what happened with Cho. Cho got kicked out the industry because he was talking about people, and the people he was talking to went and talked. And he know it, and I know it. And he didn't just get blackballed for nothing. He was going around telling everybody shit that he should have just kept to himself. And it got back to the people. And what he was saying about people, they're not going to come out and say it because it was something bad. So Jay-Z ain't going to come out and say, man, remember you said all this and that about me? He ain't going to say that. Neither is Dane. But he was stabbing him in the back, going around, running his mouth, gossiping like a little girl. Gossiping, gossiping, gossiping. And that's why I made this video, because look at it, look at him now. Now look at him. He want to call Rockefeller Rat Nation and all that, Rock Nation, Rat Nation and all that, because the lady in there was a, a told. But it's a limit on how much you're going to really be talking about somebody else's business like that. That ain't his business, what they doing at Rock Nation. So when he watched this, he tried to act like this ain't my business. That's exactly why I'm doing this, Joe. Because how's a nigga always in somebody's business mad when somebody get in your damn business? Like, nigga, it's all fair. That's what you are. You're the business guy, right? You got everybody else naming your motherfucking mouth. Everybody on the internet should make a video about you. To teach you a lesson. Shut the fuck up and do you. Basically. See what I'm saying? Because all that clown shit done caught up with you now. God don't like ugly. All this done blew up in his face. Now he got to take that walk of shame. Got to deal with the shame. We've seen the paperwork. The paperwork was real. You testified on behalf of the prosecutor. It's a wrap. You went in there running your mouth. You went to court. You showed up. Crazy. So now when everybody want to interview the brother and get his story, he telling them all, he inviting their penis to the brothers. See what I'm saying? Some more feminine shit. Like, we don't, we don't be doing that. We don't be inviting our penis to nobody. Like, bro, what the hell going on? Pause. You know what the hell that is? So he telling everybody put their mouth on him. Like, what kind of shit is that? Like it's any of his business who they interview when he constantly trashing niggas. I'm like, this dude is retarded or something. Like it's against the rules to talk about him. But it's fine for him to have a thousand people named in his mouth. What the fuck is going on? That's like me where he turn around and make videos about me and I get mad. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? I could talk about him, but he can't talk about me back. Like, really? Like, that's what we doing? Seriously? <laughs> that's fucking crazy. To me, that's crazy. But the lesson of this is young people, stay out of crime. Keep your goddamn mouth shut. Don't burn no fucking bridges. Just because somebody ain't shit, it don't mean everybody, that's everybody else need to know it. Keep that between yourself. It's not necessary for everybody to know who did you wrong and who ain't shit. That's, keep that to yourself. If somebody do me wrong and I stop fucking with them, that's all I need to do. There's no need in me going and telling everybody, yeah, I don't fuck with him because he did me wrong. I don't fuck with him because he did this, he did that. I don't fuck with him no more. He can't do me wrong no more. It's none of y'all business what he did. I'm not finna run around and tell everybody what how this person did me wrong. That's a little bit too much. Especially for a man. Let it go and go do fix yourself. So I hope y'all learn from this shit. And now you know, go back and just look at Choke and now look. 
and this is usually how it is. He had too many skeletons in the closet himself to be opening closet doors. He was opening doors and opening doors and skeletons was falling out. And one day he grabbed the door and it was a choke no joke door. 